basically all the answers with all all comes down to the same, same place. Same, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's so complex that it's simple. <laughs> When people are going through problems in life, what is the right attitude towards that, uh, according to, or in the Buddhist perspective? Or problems in the life. Challenges. Okay. Um, it's the same way that um, you have to first clear yourself, not by influence by other people, which is the... Well, in Zen Buddhism, everything is coming from the core is Zazen practice, which is no ego practice. So you have to think um, when it's a problem occurred, is it really is it coming from somewhere or is it coming from your ego? Always have to be clear about when you have a problem with the people, say, um, is it is coming from my ego, or coming from their ego, or am I thinking uh, only from my side? Mm. Um, so you have to see things from not from your side, from above. Then you see uh, the answer very clearly in that way. Okay, so there is something called an external observer or external witness. How do you how do you look at your problem? Well, problems well, basically, again, if you see things as is, mm -hmm. not from your colored glasses, which meaning if you have blue glass, you see everything is blue. Yeah. If you have a red glass, you see every whole world is red. So take off your color glass, and see, try to see things as is. Okay. Then you'll be very clear about everything. What is your take on um, angels, demons, uh, fairies, uh, other dimensions? Okay, um, the angels and uh, demons, they are in the existence of astral world. The higher place of astral world, we call it heaven. Lower place of astral world, we call it hell. Mm. So, hell and heaven, it's um, when determined to go to hell or he heaven or hell, it is depending on the, the karma, the behavior that you had in this, in this life. Mm -hmm. So, you can be an angel and you can be a demon as well. Okay. Mm. It all depends on, on the behavior in this life. Okay. Mm. So angels and, and um, uh, demons, they exist in the astral world. Okay. Mm. And what about other dimensions? Like? Just things that we cannot perceive, uh, things that are not of this dimension, of this um, frequency. Which is um, not material world, which is like the next one, the, is the astral world. Okay. Mm. And most of the time, um, we are reincarnating astral world and uh, physical world, astral world, physical world. This so when world. we go between lives, wh what happens? Okay. When, since you are eternal self, eternal it's forever. And yeah. your body is about 100 years. It lasts about 100 yeah. years. So yeah. after that, you die. Die meaning you lose your body. So you live with your astral world in the ast uh, astral body in the astral world. Okay. Hmm? So when you die, you go to astral, and un until you have a time to come back to the planet, you, you will be staying in the astral world. Mm. And which level of the astral world is again determined by the behavior that you have in, in, in this life. Who was Jesus Christ? <laughs> Who was Jesus Christ? It's the same, is that the same kind of question? Who was Buddha? <laughs> <laughs> okay, they are simply 
Very simple. They are the one who attain enlightenment. Jesus is the one who realizes himself, is the eternal self. Buddha himself had the real self realization mm -hmm. and he became a Buddha. Okay? And actually, we are all Buddha because we are all Buddha nature, we're just not realizing it. Mm. So, in, um, in one way of understanding to attain enlightenment is to see who you are, then you are an enlightened one. Everybody is a Buddha, but it's not just not realizing it. That's the difference between you and uh, Jesus. Jesus and you are the same. Same, same existence, but uh, he understands, he sees, he um, realizes himself, but you don't realize yourself. That's the only difference between you and Jesus, or you and Buddha. Okay, and mm. what is God? What is God? God, again, in, 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 like, um, in Shintoism, the Japanese religion, there are many gods. In, uh, in the Western understanding, the Christian understanding, there's only one God. But in, in, in Shintoism religion, everything is a God. It's a matter of the word. But in, in this case, maybe the God is the creator. Creator of everything, that's God. Hmm? Okay. And what is... It's a very difficult um, question. question. <laughs> <laughs> And what is the most important thing to learn while we're here on Earth? Most, most important things to learn, first of all, you have to realize we don't exist. That it, it, don't, um, don't get influenced by the illusions. Mm. Important thing, the most important thing is to attain enlightenment. Since the purpose of life is to attain enlightenment. Therefore, there's nothing important. And everything else is not important. Mm. Since you, you realize yourself, you attain enlightenment, then you no longer have to do have the reincarnation. No more reincarnations after enlightenment. After realizing yourself, that is the way to stop the reincarnation. Since the incarnation to being a human is a suffering. Okay. And are there shortcuts to enlightenment? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Say there's a mountain. A mountain. The top is the goal, which is the enlightenment. There is uh, many paths to go to the top. Some you go around round, round, and finally got to the top, which is a very easy walk, but it takes a long time. Okay? If you come from bottom straight up, that is a shortcut, yes? But it is harder, mm. which is like Zazen. Many people say Zazen is just going up straight. So it's harder in that way, certainly, say, Walk, taking time, walking long time, that is easier. Okay? So, it's one kind of path. The path meaning different religion or different sects of religion. Okay? They are the path. And which path you take, <coughs> it is according to your karma. Mm. Okay. Some people is fit with um, meditation practice. Some people is appropriate to practice yoga. Some people appropriate to practice Christianity. So is there free will and choice? Yes and no. Um, we can choose between these two. I can choose this or this which is free will. But then also, you choosing it. You think you're choosing it, but there's a lot of times you feel that something is making you choose this. No? That's why I said yes and no. Mm. Free will. Um, yeah, there's free will. 
Yeah, but different levels. And when I think about myself, not much free will, because things happen. <laughs> it happens and just taking care of whatever happens. Yeah? So are we just supposed to um, observe and flow with things or take action? Again, that uh, um, it depends on the situation. Okay. Mm. For me, really, not really a choice there. Whoever comes, comes. Whoever don't come, don't come. Whatever comes, happens, it happens. Okay. Yes? And things, a lot of things that I don't um, try to do certain things, but it happens. Yeah. Sometimes I want to do something, but it doesn't happen. So in that way of locking, there's no choice, actually. Okay. In, in, so it, it depends on, on the, each individual karma. And speaking of heaven and hell, what are the qualities that we want to work on achieving and what are the qualities that we want to... Um, um, okay, simply, simply heaven and hell, I explained earlier. Yeah. Um, heaven is a higher part of astral world yeah. and hell is the lower part of the astral world. Yeah. Um, Speaking good will bring you to heaven. Okay. Speaking bad will bring you to hell. Same thing, the behavior, good behavior, bad behavior. So what is sin? What is a sin? Sin. Um, in, in Buddhism understanding, sin can be the karma, a bad karma. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Mm. It's a little different understanding, the word sin yeah. and the karma. And what, according to Buddhism, what are the five qualities that are um, um, holding us back from enlightenment or the five qualities that can take us into the hell state of being? Uh, it's so simple. Realm? It's so simple. It's simply it's attachment. Okay. Hmm. There are many different ways of looking at and many ways of understanding. It's attachment. And actually everybody knows, you know what is good and what is bad. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse. Every single people know what is good and what is bad. Yeah. But because of the ego, knowing that this is bad, but it's tempting and, and get into that. No? Like another way of um, seeing is, you see this kind of story, like devil is talking to you from this side. Angel is talking to you from this side, and you know what is best for you okay. is to listen to the angel. But because of your attachment towards certain things, mm -hmm. uh, you pretend that you, you don't know. <laughs> okay, so how do you resist temptation? Again, it is coming from ego, yes? Uh, therefore, practice no ego. One, one uh, strong practice is meditation. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you spoke a little bit about um, the cause for wars between people or between countries, the cause for um, basically the, f the five qualities uh, um, such as killing and that are oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, Can you expand a little okay. bit? Why do you kill? Why do you lie? Why do you steal? It's, what is, is it making you do that? It's your ego is making you doing that. Mm -hmm. Somehow, um, you don't think of others, so you think of your own tongue. Maybe you kill and need it, your taste. You don't care the life of another existence, simply to satisfy your ego, satisfy your, your tongue. Yes? Yeah. Same thing with the lying. You, you know you're not supposed to lie, but there's a reason for you to lie. It's something to do with your ego. Okay. Mm. Yes? Yeah. And stealing. You know you're not supposed to be stealing. And people who got stolen, you'll suffer. You're making people suffer. 
by stealing it. And but you still do, meaning your ego is stronger than your whatever you wanna call your wisdom or the truth. Mm, cannot see such an ego is so strong, or wanting to satisfy your ego is so strong, so you cannot see another people. Is there such thing as ghosts? The word ghost, yes, it is the same thing again. Um, it's a ghost, it's a, the astral existence. Okay. Now, when you die uh, with a very strong attachment, towards people, yeah. say, uh, when you die and with so strong attachment towards somebody, then you can become a ghost. Okay. Mm. Or if you really suffer from something, somebody really uh, give you suffering and you die from that, that energy or the hate energy or anger energy is very extremely strong. That energy will not uh, present you a smooth reincarnation. Okay. You die with a, such a strong um, negative emotion that can make you a ghost. Okay. Mm. Okay. And can you explain what our soul, what the soul is? The soul, well, the soul, we're talking about eternal self? Yeah. Okay, eternal self. So, um, this is eternal, therefore, beginningless, endless, it's always there. Mm -hmm. And that who you are, who we really are, is an eternal self. But most people don't know this. And most people who know that, but forget it doesn't stay in the mind all the time. Yeah. So if you can keep um, that understanding, even uh, understanding in the head that you are the eternal self, then you can eliminate a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Simply you forget about this, then a lot of people have a problem. They think it's a problem, but there's no such thing as a problem. Mm. What is the only thing that matters, if there is one thing that actually matters? If everything is an illusion mm -hmm. and um, there is no real uh, problems, is there one thing that actually matters? Which is to realize yourself. Okay. Mm. Full circle. <laughs> it is. I mean, if you know anything else, I, I want to know. <laughs> And um, did I ask what Shintoism is? No. no. Okay. Shin Shintoism is, is a Japanese religion. Okay. It's a Japanese religion. And it's, um, we call everything God. Even a um, negative energy, but if it's a strong energy, we call it God. Everything is a God in Shin Shintoism. Okay. Mm. So sometimes it can refer to uh, spirit. Mm. But in Shintoism, we call God. When someone is victimized or hurt, um, how does that person come to forgiveness? In, in a Buddhist understanding, <coughs> um, everything is coming from karma. If you don't have a karma, you don't experience certain things. So one good example <coughs> is nobody's fault but yours. This is a teaching. Nobody's fault but yours. Okay. For example, you are driving a car and some drunk driver hit you from the back. In general understanding, he's a really bad person. You are the victim. Because you're not supposed to drink and drive, and you're not supposed to drink and drive and <laughs> create an accident. So in general understanding, he is a bad person, then you become a victim. But let's look at it in a, a karma way of looking. Since the teaching is if you don't have a karma, you wouldn't experience it. Okay. So, drunk driver hit you from the back. If you don't have that karma, you will never have that. Okay. 
Mm. So, in a way, the drunk driver hit you. It is wrong to hate him. Because by he is hitting you, you have cleared one karma that you had. Um, if he doesn't do it, since it is your karma to get hit, mm -hmm. so if he doesn't do it, somebody else do it. So if this doesn't person do it, then somebody else will do that, because that is your karma. Okay. This is just an example. Um, so it is wrong to um, think that you are a victim. Okay. Because actually the person who hit you um, um, contribute to clearing your karma. Mm, okay. mm, that's how we think. So in a way the real angel? <laughs> so if you think, if everybody think this way, if everybody understand the karma teaching, even the accident occurs or whatever um, occurs out there, you wouldn't lose your mind, you wouldn't be getting angry or you wouldn't be feeling victim. Because you, it is, everything is coming from you. Okay. Mm. And mm. on a personal level, uh -huh. I uh, heard that you recently lost a pet. Yes. How, um, how do you deal with the loss of a pet? It's a very, um, it's a very difficult issue. It don't have to be a pet, it can be a human. And it is simply attachment, yes? Um, so, more you attach to certain things, then you more suffer. Yeah. You more suffer that way. Okay. Mm. So, your question is, how did I <laughs> overcome? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I practice my meditation. <clears throat> and what happened is, his body, his physical body is gone. But his nature, Buddha nature, is forever. Yeah. So, he disappear physically uh, from in front of my eyes, but he exists. By thinking that way, uh, making it easier. Mm. And another thing is, everybody is born and die, so it's part of the natural thing. So dying, um, tend to you tend to think. Dying is a bad thing, but dying itself is not a bad thing. It is totally part of the natural, natural things it's in like our life. So by understanding that strongly, you have less suffering also. Okay. Mm. And another thing in Buddhism, um, when you die, you will meet the loved ones. So I know um, when I die, my um, cat <laughs> will be there waiting for me, and my parents, and all the uh, loved ones. And do you, while you're still here on Earth, do you get to actually see some of the deceased um, um, relatives? Do you get, comp do you, is it? Um, actually true that when we feel them around uh, our parents or grandparents um, oh, yes. coming in our oh, dreams oh, today? Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah. Everybody it's will have a different experience yeah. and from astral to, to this realm in, register into your conscious field, it may be different from each individual. Okay. Mm. But yes, there, there are, um, a lot of times um, they are, you are surrounded by the uh, spirit, mm -hmm. but uh, most people is not realizing that. Okay. And which is a good thing. If, um, if you see everything in the astral dimension, uh, drive you crazy. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> what do you do for fun? <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll 
ask you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. What do I do for fun? I what do I do for fun? Going to vegetarian restaurant. Going oh, to. So you walk around the neighborhood <laughs> taking pictures in early in the morning. <laughs> okay. So all right. Uh, those things. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So you uh, so you meditate a lot and you practice. Um, uh, you basically um, practice a lot of. Uh, um, Meditation. I'm, what do you do for fun? <laughs> I am. Uh, some people said to me um, in a bad word, say, you are a religious freak. <laughs> 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 so any kind of religious teaching or um, uh, spiritual practices, the philosophies, it, it's fun for me. Okay, and I have another question. Uh, we spoke about... Um, attachment and then we spoke about faith or religion or practice or med could you be attached attached to meditation or to the practice? No. The practice Zazen practice is since Zazen practice is no attachment practice. <laughs> so you have to no attachment towards no attachment. Okay, but if you attach to the no attachment then you attach to the no attachment. Yeah. You will never attain enlightenment from there. Okay. So that's why I said many times, Zazen practice is nothing but just sit. The word just. Just sit. If you're thinking and sitting, then you are thinking and sitting. Yes? Okay. <laughs> so what do you do with your thoughts then? If that if is you have well, that is the mind. that is the practice of Zazen. Why do you sit thing? You're not supposed to think. And you try not to think, and there is a technique. Okay. There are various techniques not to think. Okay, all right, then for the bonus, what is the technique? Okay, <laughs> one basic, uh, basic simple technique is called susokkan. Susokkan is count your breath. Okay. okay, why do you sit thing? You count your breath. Inhale, exhale. One. Inhale, exhale, two. And another inhale, exhale, three. So you're counting one, two, like that. Yeah? Up to ten, you come back to one again. Okay. Usually, we sit about one hour. So whole time, the Susokkan practice, you try to count from one to ten. One to ten, yeah? Mm -hmm. But most people, we lost their count, maybe around five, six, and then start thinking, thinking, and you know, you forgot where you are. Mm -hmm. And just keep doing this practice. If you do this practice, well, like, like anything else, you practice certain things this much, you'll get this much. Okay. So, by practicing it, you can stop the thinking. So first, the basic, very basic technique for that then is to count your breath. And when you practice it, when you try it, you know how difficult to count one to ten. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is this the main technique or are there No, this is just the beginning technique. There are and other after techniques. that, after you got used to Susokkan practice, then you take off the counting part, mm -hmm. just breathing. Just watch the breathing. Okay. Mm, and after that? There are a lot of techniques, but basically you just sit. Okay. Mm, to, to, for the aid, for just sit, then, then here is the susokkan technique. Let's put it in that way. Okay. Mm. And um, have you heard of the movie The Secret and The Law of Attraction? What is your take on that? I don't watch movies, so I don't Okay, know. so that is a movie that says that when you think, think positive thoughts, mm -hmm. you can attract or uh, you can manifest things into mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. Basically, you can manifest, uh, if you think about a house, you can manifest a house. Yes, yes. Um, that is uh, nothing but dealing with your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Your subconscious mind has the power that anything you input into your subconscious mind and it comes in, then you'll have to come in the reality. So if you 100% believe that mountain, when you say move, it move, and if your subconscious mind believes that, then you can move the mountains. Okay. 
That's how powerful our subconscious mind is. Okay. okay. But here comes Zen practice. Now, you create good karma, you go to, to uh, heaven. Mm -hmm. If you create bad karma, you go to hell. Okay, good karma, you are in the heaven. And until you spend all the energy to be in, in the heaven, and you spend everything, the cost to be in heaven, then you're going to have to come back to the ground again. Now, if you go to hell, because you created such a karma to be in hell, mm -hmm. but you stay in the hell and you spend all the karma, all the energy to be in the hell, no more than you're going to have to come back again. So, if you good, create good karma, you go to heaven. You create bad karma, you go to hell. So, it is the same thing. You have to come back again. Okay. Either way. So, in Zen Buddhism, we call create no karma. That's why you sit without any okay. thinking. So if you are actually manifesting, that in essence is creating karma. So we don't want to go. We don't want to go to heaven. We don't want to go to hell. Because heaven, then you come back again. Hell, you have come back again. Okay. So the practice of Zen is create no karma. Okay. No karma. So no heaven, no hell, to just be yourself. But your question is, um, by thinking positively, you can manifest many things, which is mostly material things. Yes. And does that really good for you? Or not? <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> by using the mind power to create material wealth, is it really a good thing to do? Mm. And if you, have, if you are surrounded by a lot of materials, um, many times uh, that enhances your ego. Yeah. Mm. So what about if you are manifesting but you are not attached to it? Can you do If that? you can do that, that is the best, no? <laughs> 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 but because of the attachment, you try to use that power to... Uh, manifest thing, no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. What about uh, the main uh, practice in Christianity is prayer. Um, what is your take on prayer? Prayer, I think it's the um, um, same thing that we do chanting okay. in, in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Regardless um, uh, of what sect of Buddhism, mm -hmm. it's something in common is a chanting. Some sect doesn't practice um, Zazen. Some sect of Buddhism does not uh, practice mantra. But every sect of Buddhism is uh, the chanting is in, in common. Okay, so can and you pray for things? And yes, you pray for things. Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, for example, somebody suffering, it is a um, um, it's a nature of a human to help others also. Um, and by prayer, you can help people too. Okay. So chanting and uh, the Christianity prayer, I think it is a, it's the same, okay. same energy there. Okay. Thank you also for having us today. We're looking forward for more talks with you. Thank you.